One of the things I've been asked a lot is how to get a background image into Blender so that you have some way to sort of reference the, the footprint size and scale of buildings when you're creating them. Um, and I've, I've done this a number of ways over the years. This, this technique that I'm about to show is just the most current iteration of that. Um, it's not perfect, but it's not bad, and uh, it tends to be fairly accurate. Um, in order to do the background images, you're going to need uh, three bits of software. Um, you're going to need Scenery Builder X, which is freely available at the uh, address that I put here in the window. And I'll put these uh, links, by the way, alongside the video somewhere, too. Um, Scenery Builder X, uh, you will need Model Converter X, which you should probably have anyway as you're in your tool set. It's sort of the Swiss Army knife of uh, scenery tools. Um, and then, of course, you'll need Blender. So I'm going to start by opening Scenery Builder X, which I have open here. Um, and I'm going to use a feature um, uh, called Show Background under the View menu here. I haven't set up a project yet, so this is everything at its default locations. Um, I believe this is the 00, zero uh, coordinate uh, image, um, which uh, should open you up somewhere around Spain. Yeah, Spain, Portugal, this area. Um, and as you zoom out, you see there's actually a map of the whole world here. What this is doing is it's pulling from um, whatever image server that you've selected, um, which is under, uh, let's see, uh, under the tile server setting here in the edit menu. I have it set to Google AP, API 3 satellite right now, although there are a lot of other options. But I found this works pretty well. Um, and I'm just going to pull out an image uh, from Dallas here since that's the project I'm working on at the moment. And then, of course you can't see any political boundaries here but I happen to know pretty much where Dallas is. It's this little blob of culture if you can call it that in the middle of this sea of green. And I'm just going to keep zooming in with my mouse wheel here till I find Love Field which is right here. Uh, let's say for this example that I want to create a background image so that I can model my terminal and uh, maybe a couple of the other buildings here. So I'm going to zoom in pretty tight on just the terminal area. And the feature that we're using is actually designed in Scenery Builder X to create ortho uh, imagery. Um, so you could technically uh, use the image that's on screen now and convert it to ortho um, and distribute it along with your package. Now, of course, for commercial scenery development, that's not really possible because the licensing forbids it. Um, but for what we're going to do, I think it's a perfectly acceptable use. Um, so to create, you're basically going to do what they call adding a map. And we're going to, you got to file, add map, and we're going to add map from background, which is this image we're seeing on screen right now. That brings up a little window here that lets you select the area that you want to actually use. I'm just going to select the terminal and, and a couple of these little side buildings here. So that's selected in red. And then you need to choose your zoom level. Now I have found, um, depending on how big an image you want to download, that for something like this, zoom level 18 is generally perfectly acceptable. Anything above 18, um, you get more detail when you get up into the 19, 20, and so on range. But um, I found a lot of times uh, it tends to error out um, and not actually download the imagery. Um, and since, obviously, we need it to correctly download everything, um, I'm going to stick with what I know works pretty well, which is uh, zoom level 18 here. So I hit OK. Um, I've already done this, so if I want to overwrite, I say yes. And just like that, what it does is switches off the background view and shows you just the image tile that you've downloaded. So this is going to be our background image that we use in Blender. Now the really cool thing is basically at this point you're done with Scenery Builder X. Um, what it has done, if you go to your SBX folder where it's installed here, there's a subfolder called Tools and inside that a folder called work and that has um, both a BMP file um, of the image that's been downloaded and it's also got a very useful text file so the BMP is just this what you would expect and the text file is this lovely little file that just has the corner coordinates um, northeast and southwest 
lat long for your image, which is an absolutely critical piece of information. Now what I do from there, um, I'm going to do an intermediate step here. I should have mentioned this. Um, I'm going to use Photoshop to um, open that image because as a BMP, I mean, you can see it's about a 22 megabyte BMP file, which is, I think, much too large for um, using in Blender because it's just, you, you don't want to have that high memory footprint. So I am going to take the BMP that we've loaded and I'm going to convert it to a JPEG. Um, so let me say, choose JPEG, and I'm not even going to choose that high quality setting. 60 should be fine. Um, it, you know, that'll artifact it a little bit, but shouldn't matter that much. And then I'm going to just put it into my, uh, put it into a folder where I can find it here. Usually I just store it alongside any model that I'm planning on making. Um, so let's say we can go to Scenery Projects. So I'm just going to stick it in the Apprentice Video folder. Blender background images, and I'm going to give it a more descriptive name. It has a pretty long name by default. I'm just going to call this KDL Terminal BG. All right, so now we've got a JPEG, which will be a much smaller image that we can work with. The next thing we need to do, now, now that we have our JPEG, um, we just need to know how big that JPEG is, what the actual real world dimensions of the image are that we're going to use in Blender. And for that, I'm going to use um, Model Converter X here. And let me call up my, make sure I've got the correct text file here. So I'll take this file our corner coordinates and we're going to go in SBX here under the special tools to the coordinate converter. Pull that up and what essentially it's going to do, it's going to take two reference points and tell me how much, uh, just the lat long for points A and B, it's going to be the northwest and southeast corners in this case, and it's going to tell me the uh, flat earth X and Y dimensions of those in meters. So I'm going to take uh, north here, the north lat, and the west long. And make sure to include the minus if you're doing something that's negative. And then I'm going to take the southeast lat long, place that into our secondary point. And just like that, now we know that it is 770.594 wide. I'll just make, make a note of that. And for the height, it is 641.093. Obviously, you don't need the minus in that case. So, now we know exactly how big that image is in real world terms. So I'm going to, uh, got Blender open here. One thing I'm using that is not actually turned on by default, but is a really good idea to have is um, the images as planes, import images as planes. Um, if you just go to your add-ons here uh, and type in images for your search, um, you'll get import, export, import images as planes. Just check that and hit save user settings. It's very useful because what we're going to do now is going to go to Import, Images as Planes, and uh, you can see here in my Apprentice Videos Blender Background Images, I've got the KDAL Terminal BG. I'm going to bring that in. All that's done is brought in my image, applied it to a plane, and set the uh, aspect ratio correctly. So it's got the correct ratio of height to width, but of course it's not sized properly. It's, it's 1.2 meters by 1 meter right now. And that is where this information comes into play. So we know this is 770 wide. So we're going to type that in here. And we know that it is 641.093 tall. And just like that, as we scroll out, now you have your background image set up 
correctly. So this should correspond to real world size and scale at this point. Um, the larger area you do, like if you were to do an entire airport grounds, you may find that the that the the numbers just due to math and rounding errors is is off a bit the farther you get away from the center. So I don't use this technique a lot for whole airport grounds uh, unless I plan on spending a couple hours just tweaking back and forth, you know, trying to get everything just right. What I do in that case is create a couple of planes that are uh, of known height and width. Like I use the runways usually. Um, to set up runway planes that are the right height and width and uh, use the background image to kind of position them. And then I export that whole thing to uh, P3D um, and see how far off it is from the actual real world and then just keep tweak, tweak, tweaking until it's just right. Um, it's very fiddly, but it works. But if you find, for, for smaller images like this, for doing, you know, a single building or a, a group of buildings, um, it's generally accurate enough that you can use it without any tweaking at all. Um, and that's essentially it, how you get a background image. Oh, this, you need may need to, because these images are so large, you may need to uh, change your clipping here. So down to clip, I'm going to start this at one centimeter and I'm not going to end it until about a hundred kilometers and that way everything all around here is shown no matter how far away I scroll from it and uh, you know make sure it's set uh, the Z is set to zero and this is essentially your ground then showing you exactly where the building footprint is um, and you can start your modeling from there